Um, I'm just getting my presentation on now. So thank you for the invitation to um, speak. Greetings from London. Um, um, Santosh, I've known for 15 years. When I was first appointed in London um, 15 years ago, I came and visited Santosh in Hyderabad. And as you can see, he hasn't changed very much, but I certainly have. So um, I'm talking about intra-arterial chemotherapy. And this is a disorder or for, uh, this is a treatment for retinoblastoma. And it's really indicated for intraocular disease rather than extraocular disease. So it's more for high income and middle income countries. And I know India's using more and more intra-arterial chemotherapy. So intra-arterial chemotherapy has been used in Japan for 30 odd years. And this is Dr. Suzuki from uh, Tokyo. And they used a balloon method um, up the internal carotid artery. And around 2006 to eight, it was popularized by David Abramson in New York. And the reason we use Melphalan is because of the experience in Japan. So um, I particularly like this picture of a policeman in India. So we're in the COVID era at the moment. So if we can give the treatment, the chemotherapy directly to the eye, it seems advantageous. If we can avoid systemic side effects, like um, immunosuppression, particularly in the COVID era, that's really more important because these children otherwise would be at risk of um, suffering from COVID-19. It's also useful for 13Q deletion syndrome where um, patients suffer with um, systemic side effects and there's increased globe salvage from group DIs. And I'll be talking a little bit more about that. The disadvantages, we're still using radiation and we don't know what the results from that area are. We're not 100% about this ideal dose. There's a learning curve, which Dr. Shields has um, discussed in her papers. There's a loss of this safety net for the micrometastases if we don't use systemic side effects, so systemic chemotherapy. And of course, the side effects, which I will be talking about. So what do we do? So we have the patient under anesthetic, we catheterize the femoral artery. So we pop a very small catheter up the femoral artery, goes all the way up to the internal carotid artery. And we give malphalan and topotecan. So here we have the internal carotid artery and we have the ophthalmic artery coming off it. Sometimes the ophthalmic artery comes off the middle meningeal artery. And it's really tough for the interventional neuroradiologists. They have to put a catheter up the um, internal carotid. And e um, in our service, and I know in other service, they leave the catheter and near the ostium, but in our, our service, they're popping it into the ophthalmic artery. Um, but they're not going to, we don't inject unless we can show there's anti-grade flow around the catheter and vis a visible choroidal blush. So there's no occlusion. And there's Dr. Shields, who with um, John Hungerford, set up our um, intra-arterial chemotherapy in London at Great Ormond Street um, over a decade ago. So age appropriate doses is what we give. And I'd like just to highlight the three year old having five milligram. And we'll be talking about that when we come to complications. So we give malphalan and topotecan in age appropriate doses, give them three times every four to six weeks, sometimes every three weeks. And it's that balance. We need to treat the tumor avoid enucleations and so forth. And I will talk about this with group D, but we also need to avoid complications that we don't get with systemic chemotherapy. And we need to avoid these metastases as well. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about first line group DI treatment of intra-arterial chemotherapy. So if we use first line systemic chemotherapy, 
in our service in London, we were getting 63% salvage. That was before the era of intravitreal chemotherapy. So you could assume that may go up to about 70% possibly salvage. But with first-line intra-arterial chemotherapy, studies from um, Dr. Shields, Dr. Munia, have pushed this right up to 100%, 90 to 100% for group DIs. Often, intravitreal chemotherapy is used afterwards. But the risk that we worried about, we worry about, and it's why we were a late adopter of this in the UK, was the metastasis risk of 3%. So the advantages, um, this is from um, Francis Munier's paper, and this is Francis here, um, is that we have less relapses if we're giving first line intra-arterial chemotherapy. So that one relapse is intravitreal chemotherapy quite often, as opposed to three. Less EUAs, and that's got to be a good thing. So nine versus 18. And in, in his group of 25, he had 100% um, uh, salvage, which is also very good. So now I'm going to talk a bit about complications of uh, intra-arterial chemotherapy. So back in 2012, we published um, some interesting complications. This is a third nerve palsy due to intra-arterial intra chemotherapy. You can see the dilated pupil and the difficulty with adduction. And Dr. Shields had, uh, all, had been publishing regarding the importance of fluorescein angiogra angiography. And Dr. Muni and Dr. Shields had mentioned RP changes for these patients. But look at the dose. We're giving five milligrams for an 11-month-old. We would never dream of doing that now because we give age-appropriate doses. But you can see the choroidal ischemia and the effect of that. So we published on vision. We're very interested in vision. And we only had 12 eyes, which is, aren't, isn't a huge number of eyes. But the reason for that is we were looking for healthy foveola eyes. And there are not many of those, particularly being treated for intra-arterial chemotherapy. But initially, we had five um, out of 12, 40% losing vision, severe visual loss. But look at the dose. They all had five milligrams or more of mouth fat. And we, because these are infants, they are difficult to assess regarding vision. So we were using pattern reversal visual evoke potentials plus other orthoptic measures for the assessment of vision. However, when we reduced the doses and we got age appropriate doses, not five milligrams in all cases, we didn't lose vision. So now we had nine patients, all with healthy foveola, and we didn't lose vision. And in fact, we didn't have, we had only one patient with the sixth nerve palsy. So we're reducing um, cranial nerve palsies as well. However, we're still getting some catheter problems with a third having difficulty with accessing the ophthalmic artery and three having severe atomic, autonomic reactions. And um, recently a paper by, from Anthony Daniels in IOVS looked at rabbits and humans for intra-arterial chemotherapy. And when he used the dose, this is the dose that he uses, 0.4 milligrams per kilogram malthalan, he, did, he wasn't getting complications. But when he doubled the dose, he was getting arterial occlusion and neutropenia. So the study shows that rabbit model for intra-arterial chemotherapy toxicity demonstrates retinopathy and vasculopathy related to drug and dose, not procedure and approach, or approach, which we'd agree with. So the balance is between giving the, a high enough dose to treat our tumours, but not giving too much so that we lose vision and we get these complications. And it's really trying to find the ideal dose to achieve that. So finally, I'd just like to um, do a look at a case and I'll be using the term IAC rescue, which was coined by Dr. Shields. Um, for this patient. So we have a five-month-old pitched up with a right eye 
which was very advanced and required a nucleation, and a group B left eye. So five tumours in that left eye. And we gave systemic chemotherapy because you can see this tumour right abutting the optic nerve. So if you lasered that whole area, you're going to go th through that nerve. You can laser part of it, but not all, the entire area. So this tumour number one was very troublesome. So we gave three injections of intra-arterial chemotherapy, and these are age-appropriate dose injections. And this was effective, this is after relapse of tumor one, for two and a half years. Then we gave another age-appropriate dose. So second cycle, three injections. So the patients had six injections at this stage, but it was only effective for four months. Now, for the third cycle of three injections, we started upping the dose. So now we're going to 7.5 milligrams malfilan. So with 7.5 milligrams, we're getting swelling, we gave topical oral steroids, and we were getting third and sixth nerve palsies. But that irritating tuber still came back after five months. So then we shifted from using malfilan to carboplatin and topotecan and use three injections. So this patient's had three injections of intra-arterial chemo chemotherapy. And this has now been effective for 20 months. The patient has retained vision. Um, you can see, if you look at the macula, it looks um, reasonably healthy, but the, this is only I retain vision. We've got third and sixth nerve palsies and we have enoxthalmos. But interestingly, we have a scleral conjunctival ischemia. And this is an anterior segment um, fluorescein, showing that if you're giving this level of chemotherapy, you are going to get complications. But fortunately for this child, the vision has helped. So that concludes my talk. Thank you to the All India Ophthalmological Society for inviting me to give this talk. I'd like to thank our team in London, especially um, Mandeep Sagu, who works with me treating retinoblastoma in the south of England. Thank you. Is it Dr. Shah?